Scarlet Witch, a.k.a. Wanda Maximoff, one of the most powerful and destructive spellbinding sorceresses in the MCU. When she is not manipulating other superheroes, or for that matter entire towns, she is usually obsessing over how every character she loves dies tragically. <laughs> Alright, well, maybe not that last bit. Needless to say, she is a very interesting character. So, for this video, we are diving into the facts and trivia that even some seasoned comic book readers might not know. To that end, we will be analyzing her actions, reactions, and powers as it is portrayed in the comics and the MCU, so that we don't confine ourselves when it comes to defining her character. Scarlet Witch is a very convoluted character, and that alone can be inferred from her origin story. Sure, there are countless variations of her story in the comics, but the one depicted in the MCU was something altogether different. The MCU showed that she and her brother Pietro were the children of Sokovian parents that were killed in an explosion. She was then briefly kept in a facility at Hydra where many speculate she got her powers, but it had been done there all along. She was born with the powers to wield chaos magic, but it would be long before she discovered the true extent of her powers. And despite her bitter resentment for the Avengers and Tony Stark in particular, who she blamed for her parents' death, she switched sides after being convinced by Vision. This is not how it played out in the comics, however. Though there are countless reimaginings and versions to the character's past, the crux of it has stayed relatively unchanged. That she and Pietro were supposedly the children of the mutant Magneto. The story goes something like this. They were raised by a Romani couple, Maria and Django. They were the maternal aunt and uncle of the siblings. However, as you could have guessed with these origin stories, nothing is ever completely realized until someone close to them dies. In this case, their aunt and uncle were set upon by a group of rioters who looted their caravan and supposedly killed them. Yeah, supposedly. Turns out they were alive. Well, that's a story for another time. Let's get back to Wanda. So, both brother and sister took to the countryside and wandered around for a bit before they were met by Professor X. He kindly extended them both the invitation to join his school, but they declined and continued doing their own thing, you know, like roaming through the woods. Things only got worse after that when some townspeople saw Wanda using her powers and they got into a scuffle with a very angry mob. But luck being what it is, they were saved by Magneto. So, feeling indebted to him, they both joined up with him to form what would be known as the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Yeah, Magneto probably didn't that one though. But if you have seen our last video, you'll know that Wanda isn't the most dangerous MCU character that we have seen so far. Though in the movies and in the show, she still hasn't grasped the full potential of her powers. This is made pretty clear in Age of Ultron, and even in Civil War, when she gets taken down by War Machine. I mean, that is pretty humiliating. But she more than makes up for it in the later movies, literally turning the tide in the Battle of Wakanda, and nearly ending Avengers Endgame early by nearly killing Thanos, one of the most powerful beings in the universe by that point. In the comics, most of the deaths she causes are accidental, like killing Hawkeye, Scoot Lang, and even Vision. But no other story encapsulates her powers she can hold better than the Decimation storyline. This was the moment in the House of M when Wanda simply decided that there shouldn't be any more mutants. She just says the words, and that's it. No more all mutants across the entire planet lose their powers. For some, it might have been an inconvenience, but for others, it was fatal. What she did at Westview was like a paper cut compared to what she is really capable of. If MCU Wanda becomes more like her comic book counterparts, it might just happen that she could be the most powerful yielder of magic in the multiverse. Yeah, we'll see how that pans out. For what it's worth, Scarlet Witch is not the most capable spell slinger. 
Considering her magic alone, she probably wouldn't even stand a chance against Agatha Harkness, Doctor Doom, or even Doctor Strange. But what sets her apart from other Marvel mages is that she has the ability to manipulate reality itself. If you throw in her experience with the Book of the Dead, and you can understand why this otherwise ordinary sorceress began to achieve feats that not even gods could dream of. Also, with Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness coming out in May, it is worth noting that this won't be the first time that the two will team up. Wanda has not only learned and worked with Doctor Strange, but she has also been beaten by him. And this actually happens in the House of M series, which we were discussing earlier. When she was at the peak of her power, he used the Eye of Agamotto to stop her bringing forth a traumatic memory though it is not made clear exactly which one it is. It is safe to assume that she was reminded of her uneasy childhood or her uneasy relationship with her brother. So, with WandaVision actually bringing us some of those arcs, those faint glimpses into her past experiences and the story told in the comics, it might just be that in the Multiverse of Madness we might just see the clash of these two powerful sorcerers. But as you guys can probably tell by now, there is no knowing how things will unfold, largely because of Wanda's volatility. Anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to hit that like button. And of course, for more content like this, subscribe to KRTV. Right.